Well, hello folks and welcome back to the studio. What we're gonna be covering today is I wanted to cover some ad hoc scenarios with Office 365 DSC. By ad hoc, I mean scenarios that might not be the first thing that comes to mind when you're first reading about Office 365 DSC. Normally when people read about the project, they think uh, about bringing the tenant in a desired configuration, right? So automating changes in a repeatable fashion bringing the tenant from point A to point B. So for example, you write a configuration that defines two site collections. It's going to go in. If the site collections exist, it's going to make sure they are configured in uh, the way you're specifying your configuration. If they don't exist, it's going to go and create them. Now, there are other scenarios as well. Uh, we've covered in previous videos the monitoring aspect of it as well. So monitoring is all about doing those consistency check every 15 minutes where you deploy your configuration once your tenant is in that desired state, sorry, I'm just going to go and sneeze. I'm good. Um, and when your tenant is in that desired state, what happens is that you do those consistency checks every 15 minutes, right? And if it detects a con uh, configuration drift, it's going to go and act on it or report on it. What I want to cover though is this scenario where you can go and assess a remote tenant without applying the configuration. Right. So one thing you can do is with the power of reverse DSC, you can extract the current configuration of an existing tenant and you can take that configuration and simply assess another tenant, see if the configuration match right? uh, without having to go and apply it, which is something that most people won't think of. Right? Normally when you're dealing with DSC, you need to go and apply that configuration in order to go and do the, that assessment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and simply call into my export O365 configuration switch, which is going to go and launch my graphical user interface. I'm going to go and unselect everything. The only option I'm going to keep for this demo is the sharing settings under SharePoint. Sharing settings corresponds to if you go to the new SharePoint admin center and the quick launch, if you go to sharing, you are going to see this page here that displays all the settings regarding to sharing inside of SharePoint Online. And this is the page where we're going to go and extract the configuration from. So everything that's on that page is going to go and get extracted as a DSC configuration. So I'm going to go in. I'm just going to provide my admin password. I'm going to go in. Don't look at what I'm doing. I'm just going to go and copy my password for one second. And there I go, and I'm gonna start the extraction. Okay. So this should take a few seconds. Once it's done, it's gonna ask me where do I wanna go and store the file. I'm gonna go see DSC, folder didn't exist, so I created it. And now in here, what I have is my sharing settings. So the first thing I can do now that I have this is, well, first off, I need to go and compile that configuration, right? That would be good. So I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna call into my PS1 file. It's gonna prompt me for my admin credentials. Should come back with the local moth. So my file is valid, it got compiled properly. Now, the next thing I can do is I can go and normally I would do a start DSC configuration, right? And then I'll call into the O365 tenant config, which is the name of my configuration that we can see from here. I'm gonna go wait so that we can see the output, verbose and force, because I know there's already an ongoing configuration from previous demos. So I'll run this. It's gonna go in, it's gonna go and apply the configuration, which really is not gonna do anything because it's going in. I just extracted from my production tenant saying, all right, how are you currently configured? I took the configuration and now I'm going, all right, so configure yourself in that state, which is the current state. So it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna go and try to apply the configuration and DSC will just return saying, all right, everything's good. It's gonna take a few seconds but now, once that is done, what I want to do is validate that my configuration is actually valid, right? So I've extracted something, but who's to say that this extraction was valid? I mean, I know because that tool is completely reliable, but the thing is you'd still want to go and validate, right? Maybe you extracted the configuration and within those like 20 seconds before you try to test the tenant, somebody went in and changed something. So what we want to do is we just want to be on the safe side. We're going to go in and do test DSC configuration. Um, and then since there's only one, we know that if it's false, it's going to be because of the tenant settings. So that's going to go in. True. Perfect. We're all good. Now, if I go in and I decide that, you know what, I'm going to go and make this more permissive. 
I'm going to set the expiration link to be 50 days. Okay, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to save this. Now, the demo was kind of a trick a little because the only thing I have in my configuration right now is the sharing settings. But imagine a scenario where I did a full extract of everything on my tenant. Now I go in and I simply run the test DSC configuration switch again. This time I'm just going to go and do detailed. I'm going to run this. So it's going to go in, it's going to analyze my remote tenant and it's going to come back and say, all right, you're no longer in the desired state. The SPO sharing settings are not in the desired state. That was to be expected. Right. So in the case of DSC, what's going to happen is that if I was in apply and autocorrect, which is the mode that says, if you ever detect a configuration drift, do everything in your power to bring the environment back in the desired state. So it's going to go in and call into start DSC configuration. This time use existing because it already has configuration in memory. I'm just going to do a wait, a verbose and a force. And then what this is going to do is, all right, so you know what? I detected the configuration drift. I need to bring myself back in the desired state. So if I go back here, go back to my page, and if I refresh this, there we go. So I'm back to having the same settings. Pretty cool, right? Now let's take the scenario where I do have another tenant that is external to this one here. I extracted from this tenant. But what I want to do is I want to go and remotely assess my other tenant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and recompile that file here. I'm going to go and recompile this. But this time around, I'm going to pass in different credentials, the credentials of the remote tenant I want to go and assess. So destination. Once again, I need to go and fetch the password. So don't look for one second. I'm going to go in and grab that and ready to roll. I'm just going to put this in Boom. and then compile it. So this localhost.moth now knows about the destination tenant. Right? It knows the settings of the, the, um, the source one, but it, it's going to go and try to apply itself on the remote tenant. Now, the thing is, I don't want to go and apply the configuration because I don't know what's in that tenant. I don't want to go and just override blindly what the settings are. What I can do is I can actually do test DSC configuration. And starting with PowerShell 5, there's a new switch called reference configuration. And that will take the path to a MUF file. So what I need to do is go in, do, all right, so I want you to remotely assess O365 tenant config and this. So I want DSC to go in, to take that new MUF file that I compiled and remotely assess the tenant. So I'm gonna go in and run this. Hopefully in this case, both tenants should be similar because those are just plain vanilla demos I created yesterday. So they should both have the same sharing settings. But it's this idea of I extract from one and I just assess another one to compare um, the two. Oh, well, there we go. So they're not in, uh, in sync. So that's interesting. Um, but that here tells me that the destination tenant, actually, you know what? That, that makes a lot of sense because I've been playing around with some demos and I did modify the uh, expiration days uh, retention on the other one. So there's a difference there. Right? So you know that the sharing settings are different. What you can do is you can actually go now and do an extract of the destination tenant and compare the source and destination to get more information. Right? So because right now, all I know is that my source tenant differs from a SPO sharing setting standpoint from the destination tenant. I don't have information about what's actually the settings on the destination. So I can go and do a reverse DSC on that one as well and do a comparison. But this here is extremely powerful. Imagine the scenario where you have, you're trying to merge different tenants and you don't know what's in each of the tenants. You can do reverse DSC, do like type, notepad plus plus type of uh, delta analysis if you want to, but you can do that test DSC configuration, reference configuration, and remotely assess your tenant. So this is really one thing I wanted you to understand from this video here is this idea of being able to reverse DSC, Take that configuration and do an assessment, not apply it. Just take that as a template and check to see if the other tenants fit the mold that you've extracted from your source tenant. So this is it for this week, folks. Uh, we're probably going to have another video next week as well, trying to do those on a weekly basis. As I mentioned last week, what we're currently working on right now is the uh, this idea of improving the performance of the extraction. Right now, we're focusing on SPO property bag, where instead of having sequential extraction, because SPO property bag can take forever, 
we're splitting it into multiple batches or multiple jobs. So right now we're trying to split it into 16 different jobs because that seems to be the sweet point. Uh, and that we've seen results where extractions would take up to almost three hours for large tenants uh, down to being 10 minutes. So it's extremely encouraging. We're going to try to do a demo of that next week, depending on the timing of the release. So on that note, I wish you all a